Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Kevin, please stop, Nancy yelled. What are you going to wear for Halloween? You still don't have a costume. What are we going to do? Honey, I'm sorry, he replied. I haven't had the time. I hate working extra hours. I really dislike it. But Fullerton wants me to start this new job right away. Ha! I thought you'd find an excuse. So I got you a costume anyway, Kevin thought. Oh, no. He would now have to dress up as something. He had been a cowboy the previous year. He looked silly in those pants and a 10-gallon hat. Texas was more than a 1,000 miles away. He'd probably look even sillier there. Before that, he was a pirate, and even before that, a fighter. The embarrassment never ceased. He knew if he listened to Nancy and got his own outfit, he could avoid this. But he never did. The outfits she chose always made him cringe. Her costumes were always meticulously crafted. Nancy was passionate about Halloween. Every October, she went all out. Their front yard was littered with gravestones, which to Kevin felt as heavy as real ones. Spiderwebs adorned their home, skeletons hung from every corner, and the entire house seemed to be bathed in an eerie orange and black light. Now he was in a bind. Downtown costume shops were all closed on Friday night. They might open tomorrow, but it was doubtful they'd have any worthwhile costumes left. He'd have to settle for whatever his wife had chosen, and he knew he'd regret it. Sunday was the day he had to take Gina out while it was still daylight. She was only six years old. Nancy would be busy handing out candy. Their 10-year-old son, Dan, might be hiding inside with his friends. The worst part was having to visit the Lassenbees for their annual get-together. Kevin was sure he'd be exhausted come Monday. The suspense was killing him as he waited to see what this year's costume would be. She locked the door behind them and led him into the bedroom. Now, it's time for you costume. Take everything off, she asked. He complied, standing there vulnerable, but then he was allowed to sit. As he did, he felt something being pulled onto one leg, then the other. As she continued to dress him, he felt an uncomfortable tightness. Unable to contain his curiosity, he opened his eyes and blurted out, Man, what the hell is this? Just wear it and play your role as Mr. Forgetful, she said. Now don't speak. Continue getting dressed. Kevin resigned himself to his fate, adjusting the suit to fit his frame. A mask-like piece was pulled over his head. Once everything was in place, he resembled a young woman. Despite its light weight, the suit clung tightly to his form and felt surprisingly good. Nancy appraised him, commenting, That looks wonderful. Now, let's choose some clothes. This is going to be fun. Many things were going through Kevin's overworked mind. However, Kevin let out a gasp when he finally realized that there were clothes on the bed. It looked like he was supposed to dress as a female extra for Star Trek. He wore a skirt, nylons, a red blouse, and long boots. It could have been a lot worse, though. He didn't look too bad after putting these clothes on. A little big, but more feminine than not. It was a good costume, even though the image fell apart when he walked or talked. He was just afraid of having to go somewhere public wearing it. Nancy had kindly set aside some time to make dinner quickly. Kevin only ate part of his, but Gina ate her whole. She couldn't wait to leave. Her mind kept going back to candy dreams. So not long after 6.30, they set out on their journey. Gina's goal was to get as much sugar as she could. The goal for Kevin was to avoid being seen. Sadly, though, he failed. There looked like a lot of little kids running around, and parents were following the tiniest ones. And a lot of those parents knew Kevin. He heard more than a few quiet laughs as he walked by one young mother after another. No one said anything. Everyone was aware of where Nancy was and how she always had to get Kevin to dress up. But they all agreed that this was her biggest win. He might learn this time. He would never get over it. Gina finally ran up her path and into her house. She was tired but happy. Kevin would have to carry the bag because he was bigger and could handle the weight. It was a big catch, and even Kevin thought the bag was heavy. 
Gina pushed him to hurry the last 100 feet so she could get the prize inside where she could sort it out and start making her dentist very unhappy. Kevin slouched in his chair in a very unladylike way because he was very tired. It was dark and the only kids walking around were older ones. When the babysitter finally showed up, Nancy dragged her husband out of the house and into the night. Even though it was only four doors down the street, Kevin was tired from the trip. He believed he had to be getting sick. Kevin was right about how the party went. Because he was so lazy, he was a little rude, so most of the guests avoided him. What he could hear, though, were the rude comments, mostly from the women in the church group. Most of the guys looked a little amused by his situation. He got a little mad. He drank. Those who dressed up best chose him. He became more grumpy and drunk. The last thing he remembered was how his bed jumped up to greet him. Kevin yelled, run, Scotty, run. He and Scotty ran straight across the engineering deck. The red flashing lights hurt his eyes, and the klaxon made him deaf. The deck shook because of the strong impact. Soon, there was bright light all over the deck. Get up, turn off that morning clock. At six o'clock in the morning, Nancy wasn't being very polite. As Nancy shook him awake, Kevin slowly understood that it wasn't the deck that was moving, but him. She yelled, come on you, Kevin. Before you passed out, you didn't even think to take off your costume. I need it back today, and you're going to be late for work. Kevin slowly pulled his feet out from under the blanket and pushed them toward the floor. He felt like he was aware of something. There was movement on board, but not on the deck. To be exact, his body. Without a doubt, something was wrong. Last night, he hadn't paid much attention to it because they were just an odd part of the outfit. But everything felt too real this morning. He was really lost. It hurt his head too much for him to deal with this. He stumbled to the bathroom and felt the weight on his feet. Everything moved in a strange way as he walked. As he did his business, he sat down and just felt his body. Everything was so smooth and feminine-like. When Nancy heard the loud scream, she ran after it. Kevin, what the hell is wrong with you? She asked for it. You sound like a girl when you scream. What is wrong? I believe I am one. What is one? A woman, huh? Still drunk? No. He put her hand on his body. T do you feel that? It's true. It's your suit. It's no longer a suit. What am I going to do? This is not okay for me to go to work. No, we'll come up with something. Let's get you something to wear, something fitting. Because Kevin was still a bit bigger than Nancy, he wore a robe over one of his own t-shirts. After making breakfast, they ate it almost in quiet. See, Nancy finally told Kevin, just stay here while I call the costume rental company and ask them something. If I need to, I'll stop and get you some clothes. Kevin gave a sad nod. Before you leave, call my boss. I feel like my voice is different now. Tell them I'm not going to be in today. Hey, good morning. The shopkeeper told Nancy this as she walked into the little shop. How did things turn out? Very good. Kevin is really turning feminine. I want this to look good, not bad. Also, this is the back of my suit. Hold on to it, honey. You might want to use it again in a few days to help Kevin get used to his new parts. Nancy laughed and put the suit back. Nancy yelled, Lucy! I'm home, as she opened the front door. She laughed to herself. I've always wanted to say that, Kevin grumbled as he came in from the den. And that's really funny. What did the clothing shop say? You should know that this wasn't really a clothing shop. It was an occult store. I wanted your outfit to look real. A mystery? Costumes are made by witches? It looks like that. And yours had to be off by midnight. When we got home, you didn't say anything. I don't even know, honey. It was 11.30, not 11.10. I paid attention because I had to get up for work this morning, and I was very tired, maybe even sick. I don't know, though. You'd think the store would have told you, though. They did not. I'm truly sorry, so how do I take it off now? Did they tell you that? Yep. Yes, they did. It won't come off. That's the answer. You are now officially a woman. The answer Kevin would have given would have been pretty sarcastic, but he was passed out on the floor. Weeks went by, and Kevin's new reality began to sink in. At first, it was a struggle to accept it. 
Every morning, he'd hope to wake up in his old body. But as the days turned into weeks, he realized he had to adapt. Kevin, or Lucy, as Nancy jokingly started calling him, faced challenges beyond just the physical. He had to face a world that saw him differently, deal with his workplace, and even manage the perceptions of his children. Gina, in her innocent, childlike wonder, adapted quickly. To her, it was as if her father was playing dress-up every day. Dan, however, had a more difficult time understanding and accepting the sudden change. Work was a different beast. Fullerton, his boss, struggled to understand Kevin's sudden change. While he couldn't legally fire Kevin, he found ways to make Kevin's life at work more difficult. But over time, as co-workers began to stand by Kevin and HR got involved, Fullerton's antagonism lessened. It wasn't perfect, but Kevin managed to find a new normal in his professional life. One day, while Kiva and Nancy were out for a walk, they stumbled upon the occult store where Nancy had bought the costume. They decided to go in. The shopkeeper, recognizing them, approached with an apologetic expression. Wow, Kevin, you look wonderful as a girl. I hope it isn't too bad. She smirked. Actually, my name is Lucy, and no, being a girl has become the best thing ever. Honestly, thank you for that, even if was a joke to play on me. I think I got the last laugh. He laughed. Walking out of the store, hand in hand, Lucy and Nancy went home. Hi, Aunt Lucy. Take a look at what we made today in class. The drawing was shown to Lucy by Gina. She was pretty good at art for being six years old. There, in living color, was a picture of Nancy and Kevin wearing purple dresses that matched. Of course, a joke like that can never go too far. Kevin was now Lucy. Gina picked up on things quickly and had never made her new aunt feel bad by calling him daddy in public ever again. Lucy quickly got used to his new job and found it acceptable, if not pleasant. She didn't like having to do all of his new housework as first, but quickly got used to it. She was also excited to show off her new cooking skills. Nancy had great ideas for Halloween dresses next year. Now that Lucy was a girl, so much more was available. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.